This is Channel 2 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. A Manhattan man is about to face charges this noon in the case of a housing police officer who died a terrible death. Officer John Williamson was killed when a cement-filled bucket was thrown from a roof in Washington Heights. Today, the man accused of that crime is expected to plead his case before a judge. Channel 2's Chris Borgen is live at Manhattan Criminal Court with the story of Pedro Gill. Chris. Michelle, at this moment on the 11th floor here at the 100 Center Street, the State Supreme Court, we're all waiting for the indictment handed up by the grand jury to be opened and read in court. So, as we wait, let's give some background here. It was on the evening of October 8th when a bucket filled with a hardened spackling compound was hurled from the roof of this apartment building in Washington Heights. It fell six stories down to the street below. The heavy bucket struck and killed John Williamson, a housing authority police officer who had responded to the area to help settle a dispute over a parking violations towing operation. Now, the prime suspect, 22-year-old Jose Pedro Gill, at first fled to the Dominican Republic, but then he returned after a few days and said to the police, allegedly confessing to the operation, but he also said to the police and then to the grand jury that this was all an accident, there was no intent, that he'd hurled the bucket off the roof as a prank. Well. The grand jury listened to his testimony, listened to the police and all of the other witnesses. Now the grand jury has then to decide, what was it second degree intentional murder or was it second degree murder by depraved indifference, either one of which on conviction would result in a sentence of 25 years to life. As an alternative, the grand jury looked at the possibility that this could have been second degree manslaughter, again intentional, or second degree manslaughter, which is reckless indifference to human life sentence of which on conviction would be 5 to 15 years in jail. As of this moment, we're still waiting here at 100 Center Street to find just what the grand jury decided. Live at 100 Center Street, I'm Chris Borgen, by to you in the studio. Chris, thank you very much. A federal appeals court ruling issued just a short time ago could help John Demyanyuk win back his U.S. citizenship. That court ruled the Justice Department withheld evidence that could have helped the retired Cleveland auto worker fight extradition to Israel back in 1986. Demyanyuk was tried in Israel as the Nazi death camp guard Ivan the Terrible. Now, he was convicted there, but Israel's Supreme Court overturned that conviction earlier this year. Demyanyuk has since returned to the United States and has been trying to win back his citizenship. It is crunch time for President Clinton. The House takes its critical vote on the North American Free Trade Agreement tonight. The administration needs 218 votes to win NAFTA's passage. An Associated Press survey shows the president's lined up 219 certain or likely votes. You're looking right now at a live picture of the House this noon as lawmakers debate the trade agreement in these final hours before the vote. NAFTA would ease trade barriers between the U.S., Mexico, and Canada. President Clinton says it would create thousands of jobs. Opponents say we'd lose jobs because companies would move out of the country where labor is cheaper. Five young boys are in trouble with the law in New Jersey today. They are accused of playing a dangerous game of bumper cars inside a dealership on Route 4. Channel 2's Vic Miles is live for us in Paramus, New Jersey now with more details. Vic? Thank you very much, Carl. Well, juvenile pranks have come a long way since Tom Sawyer, it appears. How about mischief in a new car lot that ends up in the $182,000 range? We've got to go with the police version of what happened here at Motor World Dodge in Paramus, New Jersey. Cause management here ain't talking, at least not now. As many as 58 cars damaged, money running into tens of thousands of dollars, all caused, say police, by four elementary school kids who scrambled over a fence, found some brand new vans with the keys in them, and proceeded to have their own version of a demolition derby with a fleet of new cars parked in rows nearby. And when it was over, they had damaged about 58 cars a total of about $182,000. On purpose, <clears throat> you think, they smashed into these cars? Well, I think it started out... Uh, practice driving and from there it uh, went downhill. Here at the dealership no one's talking yet but the parents of the three 11 year olds and the one 10 year old were shocked when police called them to tell them what their kids had done on the way home from school. The parents were more uh, upset more than anyone. They were, they, yeah. they, were very, they were shocked, they were upset and uh, couldn't believe it happened. So what's to happen to the four mini car nappers that walked a full two miles to get here to the dealership and jump over a fence? Well, that's up to a judge. Apparently, there's no standard treatment for four people that young doing something of this magnitude, unless you count a, a spanking. 
Back to you, Michelle and Carol. Okay, Vic, thanks. You wouldn't think you'd see much more of Joey Buttafuoco now that he's serving time for the statutory rape of Amy Fisher. Well, you may soon see him and wife Mary Jo on MTV. The New York Post says the Buttafuoco's made a rock video called Snakeskin Man after Joey's favorite black and white cowboy boots, which he wore during a recent interview with A Current Affair. No word on if or when this video want, might so air. Meantime, on another issue, Buttafuoco told the tabloid show that his affair with Fisher devastated his wife, and Mary Jo agreed. Now I get to stay home and take care of the kids, and the house, and the bills, and the carpooling, and, and you know, who's, who's, who's getting punished here? As usual, the victim. In the interview, Mary Jo also hinted that she may have had an extramarital affair. Carol? Sexually active women may soon have a new weapon against the disease AIDS. The World Health Organization is developing a killer foam spray for women. It's a viricide that protects, prevents excuse me, HIV, that of course the virus that causes AIDS. It's likely to be several years before it goes on the market. Some scientists are concerned though that it will discourage people from using condoms, which of course are critical for protection from HIV. Did runners trying to do away with the aches and pains during and after Sunday's New York City Marathon actually make themselves sick by taking too strong a dose of painkillers? Well, that's the question that medical teams who work the race are asking themselves this morning after a record number of runners complained of severe stomach upset. It's after they've taken a uh, really overdose on that medicine, seven or eight uh, pills, uh, may be the reason a lot of the people were having gastric upsets. At the end of the race, there were uh, upwards to 100 people with uh, severe gastric upset. Whitehall Labs, the makers of Advil and one of the corporate sponsors of the race, told us this morning that they don't recommend anyone take more than the recommended dose, and they said they're inclined to blame Sunday's warm weather for runners getting sick. Advil provided free painkillers to marathon runners. Well, coming up a little bit later in the noon broadcast, nine students are hurt in a mace incident at a local high school. And we'll also tell you about one high school that some say is decades behind the times because it's allegedly segregated. And later on, the stars turn out to help America kick the habits. Channel 2 News is sponsored by Pepperidge Farm Distinctive Cookies. If you only knew how much time Pepperidge Farm bakers take piping perfect Milano cookies. Adding just the right amount of sweet pecans to Geneva cookies, sandwiching their cookies slightly askew so the rich dark chocolate peeks out. Perhaps you wouldn't eat them up so fast. Pepperidge Farm cookies, mm, our bakers figure the better you make them, the better they'll taste. Only ShopRite saves me money in so many ways. Every day is savings day at ShopRite. I wouldn't shop anywhere else. We save more money in more ways. This week, USDA Choice Boneless Sirloin Steak, $1.99 a pound. Del Monte Vegetables, three cans a dollar. Mrs. Smith's Pumpkin Pie, half price, two forty nine dollars to save $4 for Walt Disney's World on Ice Aladdin with ShopRite's discount coupon. Now those are great prices. We save you money. Why go anywhere else? ShopRite does it right. Hi, I'm Jim Palmer. There's still time to refinance your home at the money store, even if you have less than perfect credit. Over the last year, thousands of homeowners across America have refinanced their mortgages with the money store. You can apply by phone anytime at the money store, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and there's never an application fee. So to refinance your mortgage, even if your credit is less than perfect, call the money store at 1-800-LOAN-YES. The money store, where America goes for money. Oh, they're wrong. It's Frankie. Be quiet. Pipe down, Frankie. Frankie only says a racket. Oh, sure, and they have be friends over. How can the outburst have a look? All right, uh, let's go. They say, I need self control. Platform shoes. Moon ring jackets. They say, I shouldn't jump around so much. <laughs> outburst, the game of verbal explosions. Let it out. I guess they need an outlet. Imagine a wonder drug that could help reduce minor arthritis pain so the Panthers wouldn't lose their star shortstop. One that could relieve headaches so more guys could come out to play. 
a drug that studies show reduces the risk of second heart attacks. Imagine a drug that holds answers to all these ailments so families could gather for years to come. A wonder drug? Yes, it's Bayer Aspirin. The wonder drug that works wonders. Several Bronx students have been injured in a mace attack this noon. Nine students at Taft High School had to be taken to area hospitals after they were sprayed with a chemical irritant. It happened about 10 this morning. Police arrested the girl who allegedly sprayed them. No word on what may have sparked this incident. Civil rights leaders are angry this noon over what they say is segregation at a public high school in Brooklyn. The school in question is the Ujamaa Institute on the Medgar Evers College campus. Now, on a recent visit to the Crown Heights School. Civil Rights Coalition leader Michael Myers said that he found only one white person, a faculty member. We contend that the Board of Education deliberately set out to create a racially isolated, identifiable school in Brooklyn called Ujama. They put the cast of Ujama, which is a Swahili word for unity. Board of Education officials are denying there is segregation at that school. Still, a federal probe is reportedly in the works. Michelle? A bill that would change the balance of power between New York City schools and custodians is on its way to Governor Cuomo now. The state assembly approved a measure allowing principals to set cleanliness standards, which until now have been decided by the custodians. And custodians would no longer be able to charge big fees to keep schools open after hours for community and child care activities. A wake will be held tonight in Manhattan for Robert Wagner Jr. The former New York City councilman who came from a family of leading Democrats died this past Monday in Texas, apparently from natural causes. Police say they found a bottle of the drug Prozac on his nightstand. Former Mayor Ed Koch reportedly says that Wagner, who was a close friend, took that medication to combat depression. The Museum of Modern Art isn't commenting on a published report that 45 rare sketches by Andy Warhol are missing. The New York Post says the sketches vanished in 1988 while on loan for a Warhol retrospective. Museum insurers will reportedly pay the Andy Warhol Foundation over a million dollars for the sketches. And Moscow has closed the famous Lenin Museum. It featured a wide variety of items from the Lenin era, including his Rolls Royce. Speculation is that the closing may just be a prelude to removing Lenin's body from the Kremlin. Up next after a break, advice on how to de-stress your family. And George Burns makes a date for his 100th birthday. Stay with us. It's Macy's One Day Sale, Wednesday. The perfect time to save on all your holiday electronics. Get a bonus merchandise certificate of $50 to $100 on every camcorder and every big screen TV, 30 inches or larger. Sony with 8 to 1 zoom, just $599, plus a $50 certificate. Sony's 32-inch stereo TV, just $1,099, plus a $100 certificate. Macy's unbelievable one-day sale. Shop 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. Wednesday. On Saturday? Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, honey. Louise, can we talk for a moment? I am with the president on health care for everyone. But these details, like the national health care budget, the government sets a ceiling on spending and says, that's it. But what if there's not enough money? I mean, what happens then? There's got to be a better way, Libby. There is a better way to reform. Call this toll-free number for the facts. He was a young man caught up in the storm of the Kennedy assassination. I was a 17-year-old boy in the middle of this thing. The son of a governor who nearly died with President Kennedy. They could feel it hit them and hit the car. She is the daughter of the man who took the reins of a shaken nation. Life would indeed never be the same. Tonight, he said, my God, they're going to kill us all. John Connolly Jr., Lucy Baines Johnson, and others share their powerful stories of the day that shook America. The bells of the cathedral began to ring. Tonight at 11, only on Channel 2 News. Does your international calling plan make you play favorites? So the special savings are only on two numbers. Let me think. Giorgio, Mario, Mario and Alex, Vladimir, Brigitte. <sighs> AT&T is offering you more than 35% savings. Natasha, she broke my heart, no. To all the people you want to call all over the world. Claudia, Giovanni, Mama. You don't have to sacrifice friends or family for big savings. Just call AT&T today. Mama and Giorgio. Mama, no, Mama and Mario. 
Well, this could be the biggest birthday bash Las Vegas has ever seen. Comedian George Burns is signed up now for an engagement at Caesars Palace for, you ready for this, January 20th, 1996. That's his 100th birthday. Burns jokingly said he just hopes that the palace will still be around in three years. Getting a laugh on George Burns is one way to get rid of the uh, excess stress in all of our lives. But for parents with young children, there are other ways to insert some soothing time into a harried life. With advice now, Anne Flechette Murphy from Parents Magazine. Thanks, Carol. There is a tendency, I think, among all of us to overschedule our kids. This is really a phenomenon in New York, I know, where you have lots of lessons. First of all, don't overschedule out of guilt. I know you can't be with them all the time, but that doesn't mean you should fill up that time with a lot of activities. Listen to your child about what he or she wants to do and choose a couple of things that they really enjoy. And then if you don't have a chance to fill every single day, try to co-op with other parents. You might share the expense of a babysitter. You might share the you know, time that you have to spend with a couple of kids at home so they have some relaxed time. Because that's what's really important, balanced structure with downtime. Kids need time to reflect. They need time to just be bored. And actually, so do you. So my last point is to allow yourself time to slow down. It gives you an opportunity to tell your child, hey, it's fine to just hang out. It's important to do that. So make sure you do it, too. Isn't that the hardest yeah, thing yeah, to learn? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I'm always looking for something productive to do Isn't in that two yeah, seconds. My little and, one's only 18 mm. months old. So I've got him going to two classes already. Mm. And when they're that age, it's well, hard to tell it whether they It depends on the kid. I mean, yeah. but if he handles it and he loves it, that's great. But if not, really listen to what's going on. On. And don't be afraid to just relax. Absolutely. Trials yeah. and tribulations yeah. of parenthood. Thanks, Anne. <laughs> Frank's back after a break with our forecast on this rainy day and a look at today's Great American Smokeout and advice on how you can kick the habit. And then my special report, a look to die for. Are the reed thin models setting a bad example for the nation's eating habits? Quality time for us is reading wonderful stories together. For the experience of a lifetime, make time to read with your children. Now that the economy is looking up, maybe it's time for you to look down at the way the Forest Store at Rickle can give your home a whole new look. At the guaranteed lowest prices, the Forest Store has styles you want, colors you need, prices you love, and you get a written warranty for up to 10 years. This week, save 50% on beautiful carpet remnants, only $88 each. And best selling no wax Nourishing self stick tiles are just 47 cents each. So what are you waiting for? Visit the floor store at Rickle. We make floor covering easy. I'm Roseanne Coletti with a reminder. The Troubleshooter Hotline is open weekdays from 11 a.m. till 1. So if you've got trouble, call our volunteers from the National Council of Jewish Women at 212-582-0220. And don't miss my Troubleshooter reports weekdays at 5 on Channel 2 News. Benefiting Gay Men's Health Crisis, Saturday, November 20th. To register, call 807-9255. It's a fundraising extravaganza. It's a dance. Six months ago, my dentist says to me, you got a tartar problem. Get tartar control crest. He said, I thought toothpaste is toothpaste. He sticks that pick in my mouth. He says, think again. For significantly less tartar in six months, come into Cost Cutters for a great value on tartar control crest and sign up for Crest's six-month guarantee. So I started using Crest every day, and you were looking at a happy guy. Less tartar guaranteed with tartar control Crest. Now at Cost Cutters. Dear Midas customers, we'll fix the brakes on most cars the same day you bring it in. For 17 years now, the American Cancer Society has conducted its Great American Smokeout, inviting over 40 million cigarette smokers to quit smoking for 24 hours, and it's worked for a lot of people. Frank Field has more now on today's kickoff, which is taking place this morning. Sir? In the 1940s and 50s, movie stars extolled the virtues of smoking. It was really the thing to do. It was even good for your health. Yes, you will feel better. But in 1964, reality set in when Dr. Luther Terry was the Surgeon General of the United States. It is the judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and 
to the overall death rate. And indeed, in the latest reports from the U.S. Department of Health, the death rate in smokers from lung cancer has increased nearly four times from 1950 to 1990. The advertising aimed at women, which began during World War II, really took hold. Women turned to cigarettes. But at the same time, the federal government added warning labels, and men began dropping out of smoking. It declined. But women, on the contrary, have taken up the habit which men are dropping so that today the five-year survival rate for lung cancer is substantially lower than survival from breast cancer. Today's great American smoke-out, attended by many stars in the media, has as its theme, whack the cigarette pack. It hopes to emulate last year's 24-hour smoke-out event when over three and a half million smokers gave up the habit for 24 hours. To join the Great American Smoke Guide and learn how to quit the cigarette habit, all you have to do is just look up your local American Cancer Society in the yellow pages, and they'll be glad to get you literature and any information you need to accomplish that lovely deed. And now I've got to accomplish a little weather for you because the rain that's falling now over most of the area will begin to taper off tomorrow. So in the meanwhile, you got you just got to carry your umbrella with you. That ridge of high pressure is moving off into the northeast. A little low-pressure storm is heading up. It'll pass very close to us. As you can see on the radar, the rain that's heavier is still off to the west, so we're in for some more rainfall that will come our way. And when it comes our way, it will finally taper off tomorrow. So for today, uh, what you've got out there is what you'll have all day, and it will get a little worse later this afternoon and evening with some heavier rainfall expected overnight. Uh, temperatures will remain a rather cool for this time of the year. The normal high is 54, and that's just about what we'll do. And then for tonight, uh, clouds and rain still around. Some fog and drizzle, too, likely. Temperatures getting down into the 40s. And then tomorrow, we'll begin to see some breaks. Morning clouds and some maybe a little light rain will give way to some sun during the afternoon. Uh, temperatures will warm up on Friday near 60 degrees, and then back again into some nice, dry, cool weather and time for the weekend, both Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Right. Temperatures in the 40s. Good. Timing is everything. That's Again, all it okay. is. Thanks, Frank. Well, it's the latest fashion, the waif look. Super thin models have become the rage of the high fashion designers. But in my special report, A Look to Die For, I found that eating disorder experts are alarmed by what's on the cover of many magazines. When Calvin Klein debuted his spring collection this month, one of the models he chose to wear his designs was Kate Moss. She's 19 years old, 5 foot 7, 105 pounds, a frail beauty whose waif-like appearance has triggered a nationwide controversy. Thin models are nothing new, but has this new trend in super thinness gone too far? Magazines have been bombarded with angry letters complaining that these wafer-thin bodies are sending the wrong message. Some experts say impressionable teenagers could wind up starving themselves and becoming anorexic as they try to look just like this. I think people can see it as a negative image because anyone can. You know, you can see anything as a negative image or a positive image. Calvin Klein defends his top model. He says she's naturally thin and incredibly beautiful. And he says the fashion industry has been down this road before. Every time fashion goes through this cycle of having of, of slim, lean women showing the, the, the clothes, people get threatened by that. I don't think it's a dangerous image. It's an, it's an image that represents yet another kind of woman. Unfortunately, I think a lot of women out there think that's the only way to be. That sentiment rings true for a former anorexic who counsels teenage girls with eating disorders. Teenagers attempted to look at the picture and say, oh, I wish I could look like that because that's such a beautiful look right now. I think it does affect young girls because it makes us feel inferior because we don't match that the model. Young girls sometimes are picking up magazines and they're trying to emulate these models. They're seeing them in Seventeen, they're seeing Kate Moss on the cover of People magazine and, and they're being told that if you want to have a really good life and you want to be really successful like the models, this is what you have to look like. Tomorrow we'll give you a checklist of warning signs to look for if you suspect someone you know has an eating disorder. There are some very obvious signs to but, watch for. And you have a teenager, yeah, you know, I was a lot of say, kids feel pressure. Tough, though, oh, do they ever? And but with their mood swings anyway at that age, it's hard to know. So this That's is right. important information. More okay, tomorrow. great. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. And now here with a preview of what's ahead at four o'clock this afternoon on his show is Geraldo Rivera. There you are. Thank you, Carol. Here I am. <laughs>
Today, New York Newsday is reporting that it may indeed be Splitsville for John F. Kennedy Jr. and his longtime love, Daryl Hannah. Earlier this week, though, another newspaper had them looking for a home together in Los Angeles. So there's a big dispute. One thing there is no dispute about, it. however, John F. Kennedy Jr., this real-life, red-hot, and blue-blooded Prince Charming, is almost universally regarded as the sexiest man alive. He is really staggering looking. He is, of course, he, he is of the, the perfect body. I mean, his pecs are, are perfectly developed without uh, being too Schwarzenegger-esque. Is he Prince Charming? Absolutely. He's a gentleman. He's glamorous. He's kind. Yeah, I'd like to know, when and where did John F. Kennedy meet Daryl Hannah? You know, Claudia? Yes, I do. Oh, they, Wendy they, knows. Um, okay. they met, in fact, when uh, John was in his late teens. Jeannie, do you think that Daryl Hannah is an appropriate match for uh, JFK Jr.? They are exceedingly well matched. How she would be if he does pick politics, I don't know. Well, if he is indeed available, I have a feeling there'll be lots and lots of applicants for the uh, position. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> Get to the bottom of this Daryl Hannah story. Yeah, right. I will do. That's Channel 2 News at noon this Wednesday. I'm Carol Marsh. I'm Michelle Marsh. Have a good afternoon. See you at 6.